Do you feel like there are different parts of your applications that need to be adjusted but you keep avoiding them because there are just so many? Well, in this video I'm going to show you some of the best and easiest ways to use AI to do a lot of the work for you and improve your .NET projects. We'll build an expenses web application and explore how we can incorporate AI at every step of the way. Just to clarify, I don't want to make you avoid work like I myself sometimes do, but after watching this video video, the next time you sit down to code, you'll be able to focus more on the things you're best at. Well, let's get started. Okay, so let me start and go to Visual Studio and create an empty MVC project. Let's just create a new project here. Select an MVC template. Okay, the first one that we have here, click on next. I'll give a name to our project. We're going to make an expenses app. So let's name it like that. Click on next. Let's select the .NET 9 version and leave everything else as they are. And just click on create the project so that Visual Studio creates our project. Okay, the project was generated for us and we're going to start and use AI since the first step which is creating our model for our full stack project. I'm actually going to go to the models folder add a new model, a new class of expenses, expense.cs. And we're actually going to use AI to add validation to our model. This way validation is useful for us to re restrict users on the data they input in our application. So we may want some fields in a form to be required. We would want them to be within some specific parameters. Let's say we do not want their name to be so long. Things of this nature are done by validation. Sometimes we just ignore this part or when we're just building a project just to test things out, we do not do this, but it is a necessary step. And with AI, we can actually do this very simply. So I'm just going to create Firstly, the model myself, I have already created this before just for simplicity. This is the expense model. Let me just paste it here. So we have an ID, a description for our expense model, an amount in decimal and a date. And now I'm just going to get this model, put it to AI. So let me just go here, chatgpt.com and ask chatgpt to add some appropriate validation. So all, we're also specifying here the type of project we're doing just so that the response is more accurate and just paste the model here and wait for ChatGPT to give us the response. Okay, so AI just generated the response, the data annotations here for us, added validation to our model. We can see that some of these fields are set to required. The description part here is required. We also see some error messages being inputted here so that when the user just doesn't input the correct data there, like description is required when they forget to add the description or here that description cannot exceed 100 characters so the string length or the length of this property is set to 100 in this case for this second property we can see here that a range is set for our amount property and at the end yeah we have specified here the type of data this property takes this is also set as required as we can see here if a user does not select this they will get a validation error we also have the explanation of each of these data annotations we set above here. If you want to read them, let me just copy this and paste it in our project. And that seems okay to me. So this is the first use case with AI, super simple. And I think it's necessary. You can also, of course, tweak things if you want. Let's say the range to be different, the error message, of course, you can, you can tweak, you can just remove the required attribute if you do not want a specific property to be required. But this is also like a good way to put some default data validation attributes here. I want to share a free resource that I know will help you as a .NET and C-Sharp developer. 
is my free roadmap to learning.net and c -sharp development. This roadmap breaks down all the essential technologies and topics you need to focus on so you can avoid wasting time on the wrong things. Whether you're an absolute beginner or already coding but unsure what to learn next, this guide gives you clear steps to follow. I created this guide because I often get asked how to start or what to learn next. Instead of repeating the advice, I turned it into a resource you can access anytime. Again, it's completely free. Take a second, click the link in the description and grab your copy. Now the next use case of AI for our project will actually be to refactor methods. I'll just explain this to you in a bit, but firstly, I'm going to need to set up the database to create the controller so that our application is functional. If you're not interested about it, you can of course skip ahead, but I would recommend to stay along and see how we set up our database here and create the base of our full stack project. So the first step is going to be to go to controllers click on add, add a controller, and I'm actually gonna use the scaffolder to create all of our CRUD operations for us. If we just, just select MVC controller with views here using entity framework core, click on add. We need to specify a few options. So the model class we'll use is the expense model. We have not created a DB context yet. DB context is part of entity framework core that basically connects our models here with our database. And we can just click on, click on this plus button and add one here. If we hadn't created this before, just leave the name of the controller here to expand this controller, click on add and Visual Studio will basically just create our controllers with our CRUD operations. A view folder will also be added with all of our view pages. Okay, here we see that Visual Studio generated all of our main methods here in the controller. Also in the views folder, we have a new expenses view folder added with all of our view pages for our CRUD operations. The data folder with the DB context was also added automatically. We are also now just going to need to create a database and set this up, basically connect it to our project. So you can just go to view here and let me find it. Server Explorer, click with the right of the mouse here on data connections, create new SQL Server database. Let me open SQL Server management studio in the meantime so that i find this server name here okay let me just copy this server name here click on connect go back to visual studio add it here set the encryption to false here and trust the server certificate this part the encryption basically means we do not need to set up a password to connect to our database and the database name let's set it to expenses data the name of our project or expenses app data click on ok and on the properties windows here on the right bottom corner should display the connection string which is the physical location of the database that we just created we store this at app settings.json so our project knows where the database for this project is located this already has like a a connection string in it like a default one let me just remove this and paste the new connection string here if we go to the program.cs when we used the scaffolder to create our controller the service for our context connecting our pr project our context with the database is already set up here so we do not need to do anything else now other than adding these migrations, the changes to our database and updating our database. So let me just go to tools here and click on NuGet package manager console on the right. And I'm just going to write here, add migration. And I set a name to it like initial migration or like the expenses model was added so that we know for future reference why we added this migration. So migrations are like this database schema that represent how our data is in our database. As we can see, this class was created here 
to create the table of expenses. Now just need to update these changes to our database. Hit on enter and everything should be set up. Okay, now that our project should be working correctly, we are going to go to the second use case of AI when building a project or also when you have are working on a project you already have is actually refactoring methods or refactoring code. Sometimes maybe you see some other colleague or someone else do a code you don't really understand or you think it's not as efficient as it should be or in case you maybe have written like a method on your own but aren't really sure what you are doing there or if that's the right approach. In this case, we are going going to need use AI to tell us if our code can be refactored or improved. Let me copy like a method I was writing before, which is actually not so efficient here. I'm just going to copy this. It's just a method that will filter specific expenses from my database. Let's say expenses where what I have written here, expenses that contain a specific description. For example, we can make like a view page to search for specific expenses and we're filtering this data in our database. So let me just paste the method here. Okay, we are accessing our model in our database by just underline contacts dot expense, not expenses. This should work right now. And I'm just taking this code one more time, adding it to AI, telling us what can we do to refactor it or to make it better? So we're also asking AI to explain to us the differences of the new improved method basically that we may get from ChatGPT. Okay, so this is the refactored method AI has given us. The first thing is that it checks actually if we are receiving like an empty value from our method so that we do not need to query database if we have nothing to query it for. And the second thing is, as we can see here, we filter the data we need directly when we query the database and we do not receive all of the data and then we filter then what we need from it. This is not efficient and it also affects the performance of our application. Down below, we can also like see the explanation of these changes. If you want to read it more in depth, a null value check in the beginning link query optimization what i said that move the filtering logic into the database query using query directly on the context and we are avoiding fetching all of the expenses so this is like a refactored method improves efficiency and performance of our application let me just copy this and paste it to our project now let's move on to the third use case for ai when we refactor a method like this, or even if you're just a beginner and do not really understand all of these CRUD operations above, you can actually take this method and ask AI to write comments explaining its functionality. So let me just ask AI here. Okay. Can you add comments to this method? Link the functionality. And just paste the method there. Okay, we're seeing that some comments are generated for us, checking if the provided keyword is null, empty, or contains only white space. This is the meaning of this method, actually. If so, return an empty list to the view to prevent unnecessary database queries. Okay, this is a bit long, but you can just take any part of it you want. You can just keep the parts that you think would be useful to you. Now we have arrived to the fourth reason we can use AI for, which is designing our front end. This is actually my favorite part. It's just not my thing designing. I just spend too much time on it and I don't really enjoy it to be honest. But since I mean ChatGPT came around, I actually use it quite a lot. Let me just run the project here firstly just create a simple expense and actually check if the application is working and then i'm going to show you how you can use ai for this specific purpose okay let's go to the name of the controller expenses dash create so that we create something first an expense 
the description is like grocery haul or something, I don't know. Just input an amount here. The date, for example, you may know. We may register like expenses you did in the past few days, in the past month or something like that. Click on create and we will be should be redirected to the index page. We have just like a simple table here. It can be actually a lot more professional if we just use AI and this is pretty simple. We can do this for any of our view pages. I'm just going to do it firstly for our index view page, which is the main one. Let me just prompt AI here. Just ask what we wanted to do. Give the whole index page there and just wait for the response. Okay, let's see what AI has given us. In this case, the index view page seems to be changed. Let me just copy the code as it is, paste it in our view page and actually run the project to see the changes. Okay, let's just go again to the expenses route here. Okay, now as you can see, the UI is more appealing, visually a lot better and actually more professional and we didn't really do much work. You can do this for all of the pages that you have here. We didn't change the other pages. Now the fifth and the last reason I'd recommend you to use AI would be to add features to your existing applications. If you just input the code in your AI and ask for the features you might add, you might find what you need there and then ask ChatGPT for the code. Now this can take a bit longer and sometimes you get more errors as in the cases we saw until now. For this reason, I have a specific video that you should see on the screen. So click on the screen. Thank you so much for watching and for being here and I'll see you soon.